We have a solar storm false alarm, some fast solar wind on the menu, and big solar flares may be returning. Those stories and more are in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to Millersville dot edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week is definitely keeping us on our toes. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, keep your eyes on region 4126 because you'll see this flare pow right there. Did you see that? You might have even seen a little teeny tiny dimming region right there. Well, believe it or not, this region launched an earthward directed solar storm. But sadly, because you just don't see much going on here, well, it really wasn't that biggest solar storm at all. In fact, it's been hitting Earth over the past 24 hours. And did you notice? Yeah, I didn't think so. So sadly, Region 4126 kind of gave us a false alarm. So you Aurora photographers, don't worry. It's You didn't miss anything. There really wasn't much Aurora to begin with. But we might get another chance as we talk about that coronal hole here in just a minute. Now, meanwhile, take a look at these gorgeous filaments. They launch here on the 29th right there, whoosh and whoosh. We'll get a much better view of those as we take a look from Stereo's point of view. But these are part of that long set of filaments that we talked about last week that made the sun look like a piece of art. Well, it, obviously it's still going and that gorgeous symmetry from the northern to the southern hemisphere is still hanging in there. We call this conjugacy and it tells us a lot about our solar dynamo, that magnetic dynamo that really keeps the space weather machine continuing to roll. Now, as we look at that coronal hole, well, sadly, the top part of the northern boundary of this coronal hole is pretty high latitude in the south. So we may not be getting as much fast solar wind from this uh, coronal hole as we'd like as it rotates through the Earth strike zone here over the next few days. I'm not expecting uh, to get too much down at mid latitudes, but we'll talk more about that in the five day. However, we might see a little bit more as this uh, coronal hole has this finger that kind of comes up to the equatorial region. So we might see a little burst of that, but we're going to have to wait likely another week or so to see that. Now, taking a look at our active regions, boy, the disk is covered with them, but sadly, all of them are pretty quiet right now. They are There are a few more that have been rotating into Earth view, and you've been noticing, if you're an amateur radio operator, you've been noticing some of that uh, solar flux kind of creeping up and possibly the noise creeping up on the bands. But region 4132, which I thought might be a bigger flare player, has kind of been pretty quiet thus far. So we haven't seen any big solar flares. Now, we do have a couple regions rotating into Earth view from the far side here, and that'll happen over the next few days. You can even see a kind of a red ring here. This is actually part of a big long filament that we'll talk a little bit about. It likely will erupt before it rotates fully into view. We'll see. But there are some regions that it's connected to that actually might bring us some more bigger uh, a bigger amount of activity here, probably starting around next week. So Right now, we're just basically looking at this uh, big coronal hole here gonna, to give us to some fast solar wind, but not much more to report. We do have a few filaments. You probably saw that one that just lifted off right there. We just haven't had much in the way of Earth-directed solar storms, so we're just going to have to wait a little bit longer. Now, as we switch to our far-sighted sun, this is Stereo A. We're back to using Stereo A imagery because Stereo A is now looking at the far side of the sun a little bit ahead of Earth. So you can see here's Earth. Here's the sun and here's Stereo A looking at the sun kind of from the side. And you can watch, here's region 4126. You can watch this region, get you, should get you calibrated. Here's a nice filament that we're still waiting to see if it erupts. But you can watch these gorgeous long filaments. Remember the ones I told you about? Well, there they are. Watch them launch. Look, whoosh, what a beautiful display that is. And also keep your eyes on region 4126. This region, as it's rotated to the sun's far side, continues to grow. So we're seeing it be more and more active. So we'll definitely be waiting for this one to rotate back into Earth view because it could be a big flare player. It likely will be a big flare player on the far side of the sun. So we'll have to see uh, what happens here in the next few days. Thank goodness for Solar Orbiter.
Now, speaking of Solar Orbiter, we're switching to our full sun map, which uses SDO AIA imagery to show you the front side of the sun and Solar Orbiter EUI imagery to show this, the far side here in blue. And as I set that map in motion, you can see the west limb kind of the we have a little bit of a wrap around, so you'll see the east limb come here and the west limb disappearing on this side. But hopefully this will calibrate you. Here's region 4126 as it began to emerge on the disk. You'll see it emerging right here. And then also you can see some of the regions that we've left behind. Now, what I want to show you, on, let's focus on the sun's far side because this is the east limb. This is where everything's going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next few days. We have region 4132. That is already rotated into Earth view. But region 4116, along with the new region just below 4114 and 4115, you can see it here. These are the regions to watch. We also have a filament. It's kind of hard to see, but as we, it gets closer to the limb, you can kind of see this little bit of a filament here that tries to lift off. And so that's what we're looking looking at right past region 4116 and we're going to keep an eye on so both this region and this region here might be bigger flare players they're reasonably new regions and they show signs of growth this one is firing uh, moderate size flares on the far side right now so expect if you're an amateur radio operator expect the noise on the bands to continue to rise right now not seeing a big chance for uh, r1 to r2 level radio blackouts but that could change here over the next 24 hours or definitely over probably the next four days we're going to see a rise uh, and then possibly things will calm down a little bit because we have to wait until we see all of these regions rotate back into earth view so amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect the noise to rise that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be seeing big solar flares yet but you never know and now stepping outside to take a look at our current conditions with our global geochron map, we take a look at the ovation. This is basically getting us an idea of what the aurora has been like over the past 24 hours. As you can see, it's been pretty low. This is because that solar storm that has been hitting Earth really has been very mild. So if you're an aurora photographer in the southern hemisphere, well, maybe, maybe if you were in Australia, Tasmania, New Zealand, maybe you got a glint, maybe a glow over the horizon, but there really hasn't been all that much. Sorry about the clouds here, though. So you probably didn't see much at all. Uh, however, these might change as we get that fast solar wind hitting. Now, as we switch to our ROTI, uh, which is a scintillation risk for uh, high frequencies like GPS and GNSS services. Well, we have seen a little bit of disturbance more in the higher latitudes because we have had just a little bit of aurora uh, also on the night side. It's, so it's been a little bit active, but it really hasn't been all that bad for you. And that should actually continue here uh, over the next couple of days. And now as we're talking about the DRAP, now this goes down to VHF and HF range. So you amateur radio operators, you are seeing a little bit more activity in the DRAP so the noise floor is beginning to rise on the day side of Earth. But overall, things are still sitting between, you know, your, the frequencies in which you're getting hit are anywhere up to about 10 megahertz. It's really not too bad. So overall, you should be enjoying some decent DX right now. And likely that will continue over the next few days. Now, switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 10th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora, if there is any to be caught during this fast solar wind that will be coming, well, you're going to have this bright companion. So you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. And now switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating some fast solar wind to be hitting us here over the next couple days. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting, well, they're expecting active conditions, but I'm thinking it's only going to be unsettled to active conditions. I'm really not sure we're going to get to a minor storm level, but we could have about a 45% chance. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes in the southern hemisphere, you might get a chance to chase, but things will be settling down as we move into the 6th and the 7th. Now at mid-latitudes, well, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 10% chance of a minor storm. Again, likely not a big deal for aurora photographers because I think that fast solar wind is just going to be too, uh, too low, too far south for us to actually get impacted by it. But if you're dedicated, it might be worth a look.
And now switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are still sitting in the triple digits for our solar flux. We're at the 130 to about 135, but we are only dealing with minor noise on the bands right now. And that's because none of the big flare players are really big flare players. They're just active regions kind of popping off little stuff. NOAA's giving about a 15% chance of R1 to R2 level radio blackouts, but these are M-class flares and only about a 1% chance of X-class flares at the R3 level radio blackout. That's going to be easily over the next couple days. I'll rise that just a little bit up to about 20% because we are getting those new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next three to four days. And that could raise our chances for bigger solar flares but likely keeping it down still at minor noise range because we're just not expecting to see a whole bunch. We don't see any big X flare players. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, enjoy this. I know it's field day in the UK here over this next weekend, so enjoy the quiet. And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. We are all in the green this week. We are sitting at the D1 normal range. This is at flight level 360 for you aviators. It's also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. NOAA is only giving us about a 1% chance of an S1 to S2 radiation storm over the next three days. And I have extended that out to the five day because we just don't see any real big risk for radiation storms right now. So the, you aviators, and this does include flight crew and you high-risk passengers, well, it looks like everything is in the green and it's going to stay that way. So you can rest easy. You're all in the clear. So the space weather this week has given us a little bit of some false alarms. We do have an a earth directed solar storm that's hitting us now and it's not really giving us all that much, but we do have some fast solar wind that is on its way. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you might get a bit of a show. Uh, it could last easily over the fourth and the fifth before things calm down. Not expecting all that much. And I know it's only the Southern hemisphere folks that might get a chance. So wherever you have clear skies, it might be worth a look to your southern horizon. And now amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Well, you know, the noise on the bands is beginning to rise just a little bit, but we don't have any big risks for R1 to R2 level radio blackouts right now, and definitely no risks for big solar flares at the R3 level radio blackout. So you, you folks in the UK who are doing your field day, you should be all happy there because you should get some decent contacts. And now you GPS users, well, you know, we're gonna have maybe some mild storming on the night side, but it shouldn't be all that bad. And on the day side, well, we've got some decent uh, some pretty decent quiet. We don't have some big radio blackouts to worry about. So overall, as long as you stay away from Aurora and you're vigilant during dawn and during dusk, your GPS reception should be pretty top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.